AMD FSR 3 is officially here, and all I can say is it's about time. FSR 3 was first announced back when AMD revealed the 7900 XT and the 7900 XTX. And as you all know, those cards came out, they had driver updates, they had price cuts, many, many months have gone by, we've seen game bundles, but still no FSR 3. But finally today, we can say we have FSR 3 in a very limited capacity, but hey, at least it's here, and I got to try it last night in Immortals of Avium, and I gotta say, it's actually quite a well-rounded technology. It's much more polished than what I expected it to be. AMD delivered on this one. They really did. FSR 3 is looking really good, and we're about to talk about that right now. Now, now I do have to admit I'm very confused here because FSR 3 is actually good and AMD is choosing to reveal that to the world with Forspoken and Immortals of Avium. Talk about two games that literally almost nobody cares about. At the time of this recording, Immortals of Avium has 20 players online according to the steam charts 20 players and forspoken isn't much better coming in at 90 players according to the steam charts at the time of recording quite literally almost nobody cares about these games and yet amd is choosing to release a awesome technology on these two games. It would have made a lot more sense if AMD revealed FSR 3 on Starfield. After all, AMD was the official partner of Starfield. You could buy an AMD GPU and get Starfield for free with it. So I'm incredibly confused why they went this route. It makes no sense to me, but hey, we're, we're here to talk about the technology, so let's talk about it. Today, I'm using my RTX 4090 to test FSR 3, and then we will also be comparing that to DLS 3, and that is one thing about Immortals of Avium that is really good right now. It has both technologies, DLSS 3 and FSR 3. And one thing about AMD that's kind of cool is that all of their technologies are open for basically everybody to use. It's not exclusive. So you don't have to have an AMD GPU to use FSR 3. You can use it on your NVIDIA GPU, that's pretty cool. Whereas DLSS 3 requires you to have an NVIDIA card and not just any NVIDIA card, but an NVIDIA 40 series card and presumably in the future, 50 series, 60 series, so on and so forth. So, but yeah, it's very cool that FSR 3 is available on both AMD and NVIDIA hardware. And I assume Intel hardware, but I haven't actually looked into that. Let me know in the comment section below. But now let's take a look at Immortals of Avium. Let's run through it natively compare it with FSR 3, and then compare it with DLSS 3. Okay, so starting off native 4K, no upscaling of any kind, VSync has been disabled, and all the graphical settings are set to high. And the reason why I chose high is simply because this game is an Unreal Engine 5 game, it's incredibly demanding, and even with a 4090, we struggled to hit 60 FPS at 4K. It's sad, it's pathetic, I know, but that's Unreal Engine 5, and that is gaming for you in 2023. Most gamers will not run this game on Ultra. Most gamers wouldn't even play this game, but if you are going to play this game, you would probably play it with a combination of high to medium settings. And so I split the difference between Ultra and Medium, and I just went with high settings across the board. And sadly, as you can see here, native 4K, no upscaling, high settings, RTX 4090, 7800 X3D, we are struggling to even average 60 FPS. The 1% lows are down in the 40s. This is really bad. It really is. Maybe this just shows that more games shouldn't go to Unreal Engine 5. I don't know. I'm not a game developer. Maybe it is optimization. I'm not sure. But this is the native performance you can expect from this game, unfortunately. And if you watch here as I continue to talk to the NPC, you will start seeing graphical hitching and flickering and things of that nature simply because this game is honestly just a piece of trash. It's, it's awesome. Awful. It has a bunch of bugs and glitches and I mean it speaks for itself right here So maybe that's indicative of the lack of optimization on the PC performance I'm not sure but either way if you're running this game natively don't expect to have Well-rounded performance at all because well frankly you're not really going to get it here at least not at native 4k Lastly, I forgot to mention that in the right hand corner I do have the Nvidia latency counter that they provide in their overlay and as you can see we're averaging between mid to high 60s and low 
70. So I would say we're averaging about 70 milliseconds in terms of overall latency when we're doing this native rendering here. And now we're switching over to FSR3. And the thing that's important to understand about FSR3 is that not only do you have the normal FSR options like balance, quality, performance, ultra performance, but there is also a native AA option. And so I tested the native AA and FSR quality options. So we're starting off with native AA. And as you can see right away, immediately, our overall latency has shot down all the way to about 15 milliseconds, give or take. Our average frame rate is up to about 88 to 90 FPS. Our 1% lows are actually a little bit worse here. We're down in the 30s, 35, 36 FPS. But overall, the frame rate experience is significantly better just automatically. FSR3 is coming out the gate swing in here doing a very good job and it gives you a lot of options between native rendering or native AA I should say and then of course other FSR quality options like quality, balance, performance, and ultra performance. Unfortunately as good as FSR3 is it cannot prevent the game from still having the same repeatable over and over graphical glitches and hitches and all of that stuff. This game is just broken at its core. It has a lot of bugs and needs a lot of support. I I don't recommend buying it, but again, you know, we're here to test out FSR3 and as you can see, FSR3 here is providing a significantly better experience than native rendering. And you might see me moving my camera really fast and stuff because I'm trying to get a feel for if it feels bad or if I have screen tearing, even though I disabled VSync and all of that stuff. But no, on my side, I did not notice any type of lag or the latency wasn't really too bad for me or anything like that. And I didn't notice any screen tearing. So overall, I would call this a really good experience. But wait, there's more. It gets even better. And right here we have FSR3 using the FSR quality preset. And as you can see, our latency is coming in between seven and nine milliseconds. I gotta be honest, I don't actually know how accurate that is. I mean, after all, this is NVIDIA's counter, but it's an AMD technology we're using, but hey, it's all I got to track, so I'm sharing the information with you. But look at the FPS numbers. We are currently over 130 FPS with an average of about 124 to 125 FPS, but our 1% lows are still absolutely atrocious here down in the 40s. And when I was testing this, I thought maybe you know, hey, there was a bad load in at the beginning when I started the frame rate counter. So let me reset it and see if that helps out on the 1% lows. Maybe just maybe that's not accurate. But even after resetting the counter, it still came up to be about 53 FPS. And then it went down to 49, 48, which is about where we are right now. But as you can see overall, again, no noticeable screen tearing, no significant lag that I can notice. Everybody has a different sense of latency. So, so what works for me may not work for you exactly. And that's totally fine. I'm just sharing my experience with you. But overall, I have to admit, FSR3 is a very, very good technology. The only complaint I really have here outside of the 1% lows is the simple fact that it's on two awful games like Immortals of Avium and Forspoken. I want to see this technology in Cyberpunk. I want to see this technology in Starfield and things like that. And you know what? I know eventually it's going to get here. We just got to be patient. And now it's time for the million dollar question. How well does NVIDIA's DLSS3 or frame generation perform? And right off the bat, unfortunately, NVIDIA got the short end of the stick here because just like AMD's FSR3, NVIDIA's frame generation can work natively with native rendering. It doesn't have to have DLSS running in the background on quality or anything like that. But unfortunately, the developers did not provide that option for Immortals of Avium. And so for this test, it is DLSS quality with frame generation and it's the only test I ran. But as you can see here, it's doing an okay job. We're definitely above 100 FPS overall, and that's definitely good. Our 1% lows are significantly better when you compare that to FSR. And it doesn't matter if you're looking at FSR3 native AA or FSR3 quality. Either way, the 1% lows are better with NVIDIA's DLSS3, but the latency isn't as good. As you can see, our latency in the top right-hand corner is bouncing from mid 40s to mid 50s. So you can say it's about 50 milliseconds or so. And if you remember from earlier in the video, our native rendering put us at about 70 milliseconds. And while DLSS3 is better on latency when you compare it to native, it's not better when you compare it to FSR, assuming that the FSR numbers are correct with the NVIDIA latency counter. One other thing to note here is that DLSS3 automatically will force NVIDIA's reflex on, which automatically helps to lower the latency even further. So ideally, if you could 
could turn that off, your latency would be even worse. And so that's why they force it on here. And so it is looking like FSR3 overall has the upper hand here, at least in Immortals of Avium. It has more options to choose from, like native AA, for example. It has better latency from what we can see. And the overall frame rate does seem to be higher, at least on the averages. And the 1% lows go in favor to NVIDIA here. So the way I look at it is you're looking at three wins here for AMD and one win for NVIDIA. Overall, it definitely seems like FSR3 is better than DLSS3, but is that only in Immortals of Avium or will that be the standard across the board when all these other games start rolling out FSR3? And there you have it, AMD's FSR3. Like I said earlier in the video, FSR3 is so much better than I ever expected it to be. I fully anticipated NVIDIA's DLSS3 outperforming FSR3, but I was wrong. Now, like I also just said, is this a fluke? Is this only in Immortals of Avium, or is this the new trend going forward? Can we expect FSR3 to continue to outperform NVIDIA's DLSS3 and other titles as they come up? And the last thing I'll say is that FSR3 is only in these two games, but obviously they'll be coming to more. But if you have an AMD 7000 series GPU, if you upgrade to the latest beta driver, you can add in the fluid motion frame technology, which is incorporated into FSR3, into 12 other approved games on the driver level. Again, it's in beta. They're definitely still working out some kinks with it, but the fact remains a lot of people are going to be able to add in this type of technology into other games that don't officially support it, all because you can add it in at the driver level. That's pretty cool. But for now, for these two games, FSR3 is officially supported. You don't have to do any type of beta drivers or anything like that. And as you can see, it even works on NVIDIA's hardware because I tested it with my RTX 4090. Overall, I like AMD's FSR3. I'm excited to see where it goes in the future. This is great for the consumer, for you, for me, because it causes competition between all the brands. And so I love that, but hey, that's all I got for today's video. If you liked it, do me a favor, hit that like button because it goes a long way in helping me out. If you're new, get subscribed. And until next time, E-Rock out.